Game Trailers Game of the Year Awards 2013. Do you really and truly care about video games? Do you experience human emotion? If you answered yes to both of these questions, you'll understand that despite so many great games being released, there is still plenty of interactive disappointment to go around. Amnesia, a machine for pigs, failed to deliver the oppressive dread players expected. Company of Heroes 2 made World War II once again feel like more of the same. And Beyond Two Souls is neither any less flawed or more interesting than the uneven heavy rain. And none of these even made the list. Take a knee, compose yourself, and go again. Some games simply set the bar too high. Sonic Lost World is a victim of pre-launch hype that compared the game with a brilliant Mario Galaxy. When you're hoping for something on par with a true classic, it's tough to settle for just pretty good. Unfortunately, that's exactly where this blazing fast hedgehog stops. Maybe next sequel, little buddy. Sonic proves that a game doesn't have to be bad to be disappointing, but Aliens Colonial Marines demonstrates that it can definitely be a contributing factor. The game is an absolute mess, failing to capture the feeling of the films, and ends up buggy, boring, and a far cry from the impressive E3 demo. Why do bad things have to happen to great ideas? Upset players actually sued the game's publisher and developers to find out. So what's more disappointing than a game that underdelivers and one that's an unqualified disaster? Dead Space 3 jettisons the unique identity of the series into the cold of space in favor of imitating other big successful games, dulling its horror feel with by the numbers action and polluted by microtransactions. Seeing a game's identity and design suffer in the search for a broader and bigger audience is saddening, but at least Dead Space didn't try to hide its intentions. Players of the new SimCity were told that the reason they couldn't play the game offline is because the game needed the cloud to run its advanced calculations, which turns out to be completely false. Server errors kept people from actually playing the game they purchased, and everything that had been built up seems to have come crashing down. And the winner is... Nothing creates disappointment like the sting of betrayal. The urban sprawl of SimCity is built on lies, and the cities themselves weren't even that big in this installment. The much-hyped glass engine ended up doing a much less realistic job simulating the lives of its virtual citizens than players had been led to believe, with sewage, power, and workers flowing randomly. The always-online requirement probably has more to do with pleasing stockholders and preventing piracy than entertaining players. SimCity doesn't just make us disappointed, it makes us angry. And that's just sad.